Hello and welcome back to the second instalment of Solomon's Sunday Sermon, which intends to be a weekly roundup of the ideas, reading and research that I've been exploring and surmising some of my thoughts, uh, answering any questions that people have asked and yeah, also looking to the new week and thinking about what I would like to continue exploring then. So this week I've been looking more at Sheila. I found a fascinating lecture on YouTube on Monday uh, by Jane Kalir on the subject of patronage and portraiture in the world of Sheila. So that was very interesting. It was talking about the patrons in Sheila's life, the emergence of photography, which had a big influence of, on portraiture, the tensions that just come with being an independent artist and the rivalries and the, yeah, just the kind of daily business that Sheila had to um, do alongside his painting. Um, so I found that very interesting and insightful. And if you would like to look more at that, then please do check my video on that. I have also been looking at Sheila the Schauspieler which um, was one of the titles of my videos, exploring this idea that Sheila is in some way the embodiment of the pure actor. When I think about Sheila, more and more I get this in image in my head of a chameleon or someone who loves the idea of reinvention. He imitates the likes of Klimt very early on in his career, adopting uh, the kind of um, decorative and ornamental aesthetic of Klimt and even calling himself the Silver Klimt. And he takes from Rodin and Van Gogh and people he admires. Uh, Sheila's a phenomenal uh, master of words as well. He cr creates these amazing poems and letters and really plays and invents words. He's constantly infatuated with this idea of self-reflection, you know, not only just looking at himself constantly in the mirrors since he's a child, but, you know, questioning his own self. What is this existence? What does it mean? Where does he fit into society? Um, and the human body, the human figure, not just the surface of the human body, but the layers beneath that, you know, what are we? you know, what's behind them, the skin, the material. Um, his constant questioning of his identity is also um, seen in the fact that he continually, continuously changes his signature. Sometimes he signs his work four times with different signatures. Um, and again, this idea of really being self-aware of his brand, his image, his identity, um, his character. Speaking of which, he has so many characters. He plays a whole plethora of different roles throughout his life. One moment he's the dandy, the next he's the self-seer, he's the priest, he's the hermit, he's um, the husband, he's the fighter. You know, he continuously recasts himself in all of these different roles. I find that so so fascinating and I think this is something that I want to actually put the spotlight on next week and really look into that more and um, just expand this question of um, reinvention in Sheila more. So I've really enjoyed um, looking at those two things. Also I've um, made the Subject of Sheila's imprisonment in 1912, quite a big area of research this week. I went to the London Library and found this book by Alexandra Kamimi, Sheila's Life in Prison, which was a period of 24 days between 13th of April and 7th of May. I won't go into the details of why he was um, in prison for that period of time, but if you are interested to know more, then I did uh, do two videos this week on the subject and do recommend that book um, by Alexandra Kamimi if you are also interested. Um, it's very fascinating, very insightful, and it made me discover Sheila's prison diary. And 
yeah, so those were kind of things that I was looking at this week. Um, I have learned a lot this week. Um, yesterday I shared with you a playlist which I composed or created over the last um, few days. The playlist is called Egon Schiele, A Musical Portrait, and it consists of 28 songs that are in some way related to Schiele, um, exploring the, the man, exploring the times in which he was living, trying to kind of create a sound world um, that encapsulates the intensity of Schiele, uh, what he loved, what he um, pursued and all those things. So I really enjoyed that exercise because it kind of felt like just uh, exploring the subject of Schiele in a different medium because rather than writing down words I was um, kind of, I don't know, exploring a different part of my brain or thinking about things in a, in a more sensuous or kind of, yeah, it was just a different way of thinking about Sheila and interacting with ideas. So I, I want to keep making these playlists and as a way of honing my ideas and images because I realised that a lot of my thinking and um, a lot of the... Um, a lot of what really gets me excited um, is thinking about these ideas almost in musical terms. Um, so yeah. Lastly, yesterday was the opening night of the Rheingold at the English National Opera. This is a production that I am dancing in and reviews came in this morning. Uh, one review from The Times said it was a witty and insightful Jones's new production, that's Richard Jones, delivers an emphatic win for English National Opera. Um, so there's been glittering reviews, in fact. I'm very pleased and proud to say about this production. Um, and I guess something that it reminds me uh, in a very great way is the beauty and the importance of collaboration. You know, of course... I am getting so much from doing this independent reading and writing. I feel like it has to be done. Um, I have to, you know, be disciplined and uh, methodical and precise in understanding what it is I'm trying to explore and no one can do the reading for me. I have to physically, you know, go find the book, sit down and do that. But at the same time, to create works of art and to create something that truly, you know, makes an impact on people, inspires, uplifts, motivates people, that often requires collaboration. And it's not a solitary effort, but requires the, the, the beauty of many different minds and talents coming together. And I think... Being part of this production, working with uh, stage managers, working with dancers, working with singers, costume designers, set designers, lighting, the director, the movement director, you know, countless people, music staff, there's so many people all responsible for different um, elements of the production. And it's how you bring those all together, how you work with other people, how you can share ideas communicate effectively it's you know such a um, such a skill and such a great thing to observe and be a part of so um yeah it's a real great thing that i want to um yeah remember and value and appreciate and always celebrate that and hope to make that a big part of my you know creative development and productions moving forward so anyway, I want to wish you a very beautiful and productive start to the new week. And I hope that you have lots of chances to collaborate and yeah, learn new things and work in wonderful ways with other people. I shall see you 
tomorrow.